you. Good evening, everyone. How are you guys feeling tonight? You still have energy? Yes? Thank you for that introduction. Thank you, Love Tomorrow, for inviting me to share some thoughts with you guys today. Well, my name is Jason Silva. My background is as a television presenter and filmmaker. I hosted a show called Brain Games on the National Geographic Channel for many years. And that show was all about the ways in which the brain perceives reality, but also all about the ways in which the brain often misperceives reality. We have a lot of cognitive loopholes and we make a lot of cognitive errors and we don't often see the world as it is, but we see it through a prism of stereotypes and expectations and biases. And I'd like you to keep that metaphor in mind as I share with you some thoughts about the accelerating future that is increasingly coming into existence. I call the future cyberdelic. It's a kind of intersection between cybernetics, right, and psychedelics. Increasingly, the imagination, it seems, is summoning its own literalization. But before we get there, where does this begin for me? This begins for me with a passion for human creativity. This begins for me with a passion for human imagination. And this has turned into a passion for technology because I believe that at its best, technology literalizes human imagination. Technology is the concretization of human creativity in the world. Technology is the human mind turned inside out. The cognitive philosophers, David Chalmers and Andy Clark, in their seminal essay, The Extended Mind Thesis, they describe technology as a scaffolding of the mind that extends our thoughts, our reach, and our vision. And it has always been so. If you go back 100,000 years, to the savannas of Africa when early hominids first picked up a stick from the ground and used that stick to reach a fruit that was hanging off a high tree branch. We've been using our tools, we've been using our sticks, we've been using our instruments to extend our reach, to overcome our boundaries and our limitations, to transcend our limits, right? As Marshall McLuhan, the famous philosopher, said, we build the tools, but then the tools build us. We've been in a co-evolution of humans and technology since the dawn of humanity that has been accelerating. Now, fast forward to the present day. We live in an age of acceleration. We live in an age of disruption. We live in an age of digital transformation. Increasingly, there's a kind of vertigo as these exponential technologies start upending reality, transforming the world. Whether it's artificial intelligence or biotechnology and genetics, we're increasingly slingshotting into the future. But the question is why, right? Technology has always changed the world, the printing press, the origin of language, the wheel. We've always disrupted and redefined ourselves and redefined our boundaries and transcended our maps of possibility. But these changes used to happen over many generations and now they're happening within our own lifespans. And again, the question is why? And this has to do with something called exponential technologies, digital transformation, the tools, the technologies that are upending the world advance and progress at exponential rates. But human beings, we think about change linearly. We have linear intuitions and linear biases in an exponential world. So what's the difference between linear and exponential change? The example Ray Kurzweil uses takes 30 steps. If you take 30 linear steps, over time you get to 30. If you take 30 exponential steps, over time you get to a billion. 30 exponential steps gets you to a billion. 30 linear steps gets you to 30. So if you think linearly, you're future blind. Exponential progress is the reason the smartphone in your pocket today is a million times cheaper, a million times smaller, and a thousand times more powerful 
than a supercomputer that was half a building in size 40 years ago. So the tools to change the world, the supercomputers of yesterday that only the rich and privileged could access are now in everybody's hands. A young kid in Africa with a smartphone has better communications technology than a head of state had 25 years ago. In the next 25 years, these technologies will shrink to the size of blood cells. We'll increasingly be able to turn biology into an information technology. And our ability to create medical interventions that reverse engineer us from inside out, whether it's curing cancer or radically extending the human lifespan, are also advancing exponentially. Our ability to program atoms using nanotechnology increasingly turns matter into a programmable medium. And so we're leaning into a world shaped by human imagination. As David Deutsch wrote in The Beginning of Infinity, if you look at the topography of a modern city like Manhattan, that's a topography that is shaped more by mind, consciousness, intentionality, and human will than by geology. We already know the unintended consequences of how we're impacting the planet, but there are all sorts of ways in which us transcending geology means that we have within us the capacity to not just address the grand challenges of humanity, but create a world beyond our imagination and awaken ourselves to all of our cyberdelic dreams. So I'd like to show you first a quick video called The Future of Us, because it is my aim to use media and storytelling to light a fire under people's ass and get them thinking differently. Please show the first video. So let's talk about the future of us. What does that even mean, the future of us? It's a look at what comes next. It's a look at what might be, because today, Exponentially emerging technologies are transforming what's possible. They're helping us overcome, transcend, even biological limitations. The very rules of what it is to be human are up for grabs. We're rewriting the software of life with biotechnology. We're turning matter into a programmable medium with nanotechnology. We're creating sentient minds with artificial intelligence that are not bound by the limitations of biology. These three overlapping revolutions, GNR, genetic nanotechnology and robotics, together will be leveraged to lead us towards a black hole like impossible to fathom singularity. It's like staring into the sun, a moment of a rousing symphonic climax when all of mind leverage the network together transcends its biological origins and we become something more. People worry about the AIs and the them. Well, as Kurzweil says, that's gonna be us. The future of us is ours to dream up. Now, there is a sense that we're moving in such acceleration, that we're moving so fast into the future that things might go off the rails. Edward O. Wilson, he has a famous line. He says, we have paleolithic brains, medieval laws, and godlike technology. And so the question becomes, how do we summon the necessary wisdom to deploy these tools in a way that addresses the grand challenges of humanity and gives us a new North Star, one shaped by human imagination and our capacity to dream reality into existence? One of the most exciting things about artificial intelligence, I think, is to create new ways of painting our inner life, of exteriorizing our imagination, those ineffable inner universes inside of us that we struggle to communicate with language. Now, I've been doing this with AI to try to create a form of liquid imagination to paint my dreams on the screen and inspire people to think differently about these emerging technologies and about the future of human creativity and human self-expression. And that's what this last video is about as it grapples with the famous Philip K. Dick question and novel, do androids dream of electric sheep? Let us ask this question and think about our future as we watch this next video. Thank you. Do androids dream of electric sheep? I've always loved the title of that story by Philip K. Dick and it feels ever more prescient today. Do androids dream of electric sheep? We ask ourselves 
this question as we increasingly grapple with a world of synthetic intelligence where more and more of our interactions are happening with algorithms that seem to exhibit some of the qualities of awareness, some of the qualities of sentience. It's the dawn of artificial intelligence. It's the dawn of a kind of intelligence explosion. And as we grapple with the philosophical issues raised by this encounter with a new kind of mysterium tremendum, a new kind of synthetic mysterium tremendum, we are having to ask deep questions about what it means to have a psyche, what it means to have an inner world, what it means to have theory of mind, what it means to have an inner psychology. And so, of course, Philip K. Dick was ahead of his time when he asked the question, do androids dream of electric sheep? You know, when Eric Davis wrote about the spiritual cyborg in his book, Technosis, he wrestled with this very same thing. We are the spiritual cyborg. We are the thing that is a hybrid of biological and non-biological intelligence. We create second skins and scaffoldings. We are increasingly merging with our tools and technologies, but now we are spawning a technology that talks back. Now we are spawning a kind of artificial personhood and we're interacting and engaging in a feedback loop with that artificial personhood. And so again, we should ask this question. We should get into a platonic conversation about what this means and where we're heading as we increasingly wonder, do androids dream of electric sheep? Do androids dream of electric sheep? Thank you so much. I hope that leaves a lot to think about. Cheers, guys. Good night.